what I want it. Okay, all right. So we will have a meeting tomorrow. Okay, let's so go me, back. So my question is, that when he's going to that meeting, to, you know, they're talking about the change in the policy to, you know, on the transfer station. Uh, yeah, it's okay. Chief Mountain. Chief Mountain, we, we're going there. So, so Councilor Barbas, you know, question whether that fits the, the agreements that, that have been made. And, and so I'm wondering how, as a council, we feel about that. Uh, I mean, so, it could have some positive <laughs> effects. Well, well uh, I, think, I think in yes. the short term, it has some really positive effects for us, for our community. But uh, it's not going to be something that's going to happen really quick, because I was the guy at the policies that was making those changes, that was writing policy changes. And they weren't done by the time I left. And so it's going to have a little bit of a delay, because that whole committee is going to have to be reconstituted at this point. Um, so it's not a change that you're going to see happen by January 1st, that's for sure. Uh, but that is one of the issues that has to be addressed there, whether those policy changes fit in with the agreements that we signed, mm -hmm. that everybody signed. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, there know, is one for all your Okay. Well, and as, as you go into to yeah, I just received their agenda <coughs> yesterday. So. And, and it's a short agenda, if yeah, I'm correct, very short. Because it's, to me, it's just before their, their Christmas right. party. Yeah. So it, like, it's going to be a 20 minute meeting. They're not going to get into this for this meeting. It won't even happen until January, right? And then they're having the party that same night? Yeah. Yes, they always do. Always good to have a party. I'm just <laughs> thinking that, that, that you know, if, 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 you know, if we own it, we fix it. Then we also need to have. You know, the, the town needs to have control over the over the total transfer station. We do. Well, I don't know if we do totally. Don't, or don't we have policies yeah. that are dictated by... No, we have uh, no, not, not, not very many. many. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, that's something you might want to get really get up. Councillor, um, do you have a book or a binder? Did you give yeah, it to Yeah, no, I haven't given it to you. Maybe you want to make sure we'll that Councillor P. Roy has a yeah. binder. Yeah. All right, so the handy bus, you didn't have a meeting, or what happened there? No, we have not had a meeting to date. Uh, Mike's been difficult to pin down for a time to get together for a meeting. We need to have one because we have some issues that need to be addressed. Uh, can you see that that happens sooner than later? Working on it. Thank you. Yep. Historical Society, Councillor Bangry. Tomorrow night. Tomorrow night? Yes. Okay, good. Intermunicipal, nothing. Library is tomorrow. Also. No, it was last night. Last night. So you want to give us a report for next? They next? Uh, submitted their budget to Hacken Lobby today, didn't they? I'm not sure. For the requisition? Yeah. And what does it look like? Well, they've had to increase it a little bit because of the uh, increase in wages for minimum wage. So it works out to about 7%. For the requisition, the requisition increase is 7%. 7 percent Because of the $15, $15 minimum wage? It's only 11 No, it's, it's 11 12. Uh, yeah. It's 11 12, 11, 11. 11 and 12 60 by the end of the year. Yeah. By, 12, 6, uh, by the end of? By the end of 2016. I can't know what the dates are. Really so that's 7 percent. Wow. That's steep. Welcome to the world. Yeah. <laughs> that, is, that is very steep. Is there no way where they can uh, scrunch Either and cut that's and... Well, the one thing they want to do, too, is they want to start building up funds for expenses that come up. Like right now, they don't have any funds to cover those expenses. If the vacuum breaks down, they take it in and... They don't have no reserves. But there's no reserve to pay for things like that, so they would like to take about two thousand dollars and keep it for themselves. That's reflected in this new budget. That increase. Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. I think it's about twelve hundred dollars this year. That's a seven percent increase total requisition. From last year. Wow, that's significant. I would say that, that is very significant. But most of it was wages before anyway. Yeah. So a ten percent yeah. increase in wages is you know, it only hit us at seven percent. So Yeah. So I, I remember last year when we were discussing that and, and Councillor Barnes went back to the No, that was two years ago. Was that two years ago? Yeah. Last year there was an increase but it went we passed it. Yeah, it'd be the very minimal. 
Pardon me? It was very familiar. Yeah, they just no, basically went by uh, uh, ten or twelve thousand bucks. Mm -hmm. They basically went by what the uh, percentage of the town is offering. Offering? For our employee contract. Yeah. That's a good job, seven percent. That's Okay, moment 12, did you have a meeting? Yeah. No. Uh, Actually, you know, just sorry, while we're still talking about that 7%, it'd be interesting, and I don't know how we can track as a municipality, but it would be interesting to see how our requisition amounts and therefore, you know, potentially our tax rule has been affected by, you know, decisions that have been made by higher levels of government that had mm -hmm. nothing to do with us. So, I mean, if, if ultimately we have a 3% increase and we say, hey, you know, 90 percent of that was just in response to this new initiative at the provincial level or something. You know, anyway, I don't know. That's probably just splitting hairs, but yeah. again, uh, you can see how that trickled down, right? Now it's yeah. trickling into them, that's trickling back over to us. We're going to have to possibly see that show up in municipal taxes. Edwin? Okay, uh, Parks and Recs, you have uh, a meeting a report there by Councillor Barnes and Councillor Barnes I was asking you about those rates that had been approved and you need to have a, bring your resolution to the table for us to next, next, the next the, meeting. For the next meeting, yeah. That that okay. that rate was remember we went back, we talked Yeah we we, we asked, asked them to negotiate, they went back to the they went back to the swim club and that was the rate that they negotiated so it brought it down considerably from what they were going to charge. But I see that it is only until the end of this June 2016. So it's very limited in time. Well, it's, it's, it's really done. It, no, it's just, no, that's the, that's the, they only go to the end of June. But up. that requisition, that that, change that's of just for that's just for this year. Okay, so it was not clear in my mind. Yeah. Okay, all right. So yeah. those are all the reports. Thank you oh, so one, much. One question on the mayor. We, we do talk okay. about South Road. The oh, broadband. South Road. Yeah, you guys were working on a broadband resolution to AUMA. We already passed it. It was passed uh, by a large, large amount. If you remember, well, I that guess was presented. AUMA it was presented there. by the town of Raymond. Yeah. No, I, okay, so I'm talking about this new one. Uh, oh, the, the Town of Tabor? Yeah, what's that? I was just curious. Okay, the Town of Tabor came with uh, a resolution, but the wording of it was not specially clear for a resolution. And they wanted the mayor to leave as an organization to approve it. But it really was not something that at that point we could give support to the way it was formulated. It needed some improvement. So we have put it back into their hands to come back with a revised version of it. Gotcha. And that's, are and they planning to present that next year or something? Uh, they're supposed to present it in December, we hope. To who? To uh, Mayor's and Reeves. Reeves. Oh, just for approval for Mayor's Reeves. Okay. Right. All right. Uh, and I'm then we will bring it back to our the, uh, diverse community for approval too, if the towns want to show the support to whatever they're offering, then we would write a letter of support if that is what council wants. Right. I was just curious. Okay. It might have come up in my broadband meeting tomorrow. So uh, I could maybe do something for you and send you that resolution. If you could, yeah, if you could email okay. that, thank you. Uh, the, it was, yeah, it was a little problematic for us. Um, on, on the uh, Mayor's and Reeves report, uh, where you, Grant Hunter made his presentation about, is this a correct number that it's 47 million? Mm -hmm. It can't be, uh, I don't know if that's the great number. That's what they gave us. 
Yeah, yeah, well, that's what I'm wondering. Forty-seven billion is more than what the actual budget is. Forty-one point five. <laughs> uh, sometimes numbers are thrown numbers. around. <laughs> sometimes numbers are thrown around, and there could be an, a mistake. That, that, that because was, my uh, point of view is probably more like four points. So. Well, that's yeah. what yeah. I would have yeah. guessed would be a little closer. I don't know how you could possibly uh, spend that much money. One year, because there's not the, yeah. there's not the equipment, the manpower to do one, it. One, that and number, and then two, that the yeah. opposition supported those measures. Which you know something? What I will do, I will uh, I send a query <laughs> to <laughs> the Secretary <laughs> of Thank you. And ask her to kind of confirm this figure with them. Thank you. Um, and but good for you for catching it. Right, but a little further down, it's mentioned uh, where you, and thank you for doing this, uh, you asked uh, the MLA about. Um, the AHS initiatives and potentially the project for hospital, and then they said that that, that could be seen at a website. Did you ever find like a list of projects? Yeah, I found a list, list of projects. We're not listed. We're not listed. That's okay. Very listed. Uh, may, maybe if you want a little mm -hmm. update on that, we went with uh, Fred Lacey to uh, see Sean Shilton in Lethbridge uh, AHS coordinated for the South region. And we asked him a little bit what, what's gone on and how did we get so derailed. And uh, his was really, actually, Lethbridge got $25 million uh, to do their project. And of course, then our business case and all that has been. They borrowed all our numbers. So, so Lethbridge took all our money as well. Well, you know, it's not all our money because honestly, a uh, business case about $75,000, but if you don't have it, then you don't have it, right? So that will have to wait a little. And um, uh, Fred Lacey had a chance to speak with uh, Minister Hoffman at uh, AMDNC, and uh, they received our letter that I had sent. Uh, we're quite aware of our situation. Their question to uh, Fred and uh, Councillor Curl was, so uh, what are you going, what, what do you see uh, as your new hospital? But he had the sense it was more like, what are you going to bring? What, what's a plan you have? And I thought, they were supposed to build us a business case and they were supposed to have the plan because we developed the needs assessment as a town. So I spoke with Jeff, there's a few venues of things we, we're going to try to explore and once we have a little bit of, a better sense we'll kind of keep you abreast. Mayor, is that a, a case of a change in the policy of the way they're doing things or a case of a minister not being experienced in what the process is yet? No, I think I think she's quite aware that we uh, should have had some attention, but I think as a government, they decided that and the big centers were going to get the money uh, for infrastructure at this point. A hospital in our town would cost anywhere between 150 million and 200 million dollars. So there are big centers that are heavily populated and are in great need of even more money than that. So there is only so much money and so much debt. And Apparently not. Forty-seven billion dollars. So what I what what I ask is uh, in our letter we ask. What, how do they intend to keep our hospital functioning and maintained? And I also asked in that same letter, when do they intend to have a business case ready for us? And so it's in their call to not them answer. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Anything else? If not, we have. Uh, the uh, correspondence, a uh, committee reports 
the peace officer, the project reports, you saw the project report. There are some, some uh, analysts that are not totally complete, but you can see we're moving along pretty good. Uh, the peace officer report is there for your information. The strategic plan update uh, is there. We're going to deal with that in January. Question, Councillor Bangri, under 11. You had a question for Jeff. Yes, can you give us an update on what's happening with our, with our pool, uh, the water slides, and also with the budget accordingly to that water slide? So uh, nothing changed on the budget. You remember, I want to say, two months ago, we had a motion to move some money out of reserves to pay for all that. No change there. That should all be fine. The, the big thing we're up against right now is getting that, uh, getting that slide constructed with now the weather set in. So a little better than half the concrete's done, I think. Um, and it may, the problem we've got is the Rotary Club's grant, we had an extension till the end of December to have the project complete. And unless it gets mild here, and it might, it might get mild enough, the, the contractor's still game to come down and put it up. So not on a day like today, but I uh, wouldn't be too keen on that. But if we can just get all the cement work done and the cement contractors, whenever the, they can hoard it in and it's mild enough, they'll do that work too. But we've probably got four or five days of real cold weather here before we start seeing some zeros and one degrees again. I think at the end of the day we'll be fine. I think the province will give us enough. Everything's on site. We've expended a good chunk of the money. I think we'll be just fine. We're just going to have to apply for it. Potentially another extension. Now the cement work is being done by a local company. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. We've had some local guys doing that. Yeah. We ran into a few issues with drains and piping and a few things that didn't go as smooth as we wanted, but it's all sorted now and we're we're going. But there's still some more cement work that needs to be done before the slide can be totally installed. Okay. Thank you. I've, I've had a couple of uh, people uh, ask questions about funding and where the money came from for what, for part of it and stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering if there's uh, uh, the possibility maybe of us putting something on the website, breaking everything down of where the funding actually ended up coming from. But sure. Yeah, I mean, your bulk, as you know, was reserved. Yeah. The town was 20000 a year for 30 years or something, so we had about $600,000 cash there, right? Yeah, but yeah, we've got we've had contributions now from the, the kinsmen, the, the now defunct kinsmen, unfortunately. Yeah. And then the Rotary and um, private so, donors. Yeah, we've had a few donors. So yeah, we could definitely. It wouldn't be hard to put a little breakdown of total expenses to date where they came from. Yeah. All right. There's some MSI in there too. But all right, I'll look at that. Thanks. Well, okay. and maybe maybe uh, it would be a good opportunity to outline the next phase as well in there, just as a public statement, saying, "Hey, this is what we're looking at doing next year or whatever." Okay. Sounds like a deal. Twelve correspondents. That is something that we need to take a, a little bit of a few minutes discussing. Uh, Mrs. Henderson has some some concerns, and they're fair concerns. Their concerns are with the trailers that are parked on the streets, and sometimes buses. And can Can you maybe quantify or specify what we're talking about when we're talking about trailers here? It's fifth wheel hauling. Yeah, I, 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 I know what it is, so yeah. I want to make sure everybody else knows. It's a fifth wheel. It. Yeah. But it's hooked onto a vehicle and it's licensed and it's insured. Yeah. Correct. So according to our policy, uh, pre uh, presently, it is according to the policy. It is moved every couple of weeks, ten centimeters, <laughs> brought back to the same place. But it is according to policy. The question is, is that policy appropriate? Especially in a, in a street like hers that is fairly narrow, that is used by bus, that needs to be cleared uh, when the snow uh, is there. Could it pose, actually, a security risk? And I would suggest it might. Councilor Baker. Mayor, uh, this discussion came up yesterday afternoon with myself and, and uh, 
our administrator, our CAO. And uh, this has been basically uh, Lloyd has dealt with it, and I understand that this unit will not be left there for very much longer. It will be uh, moved out to a, his uh, father's residence or something like that. So, so just, just out of curiosity here, because by policy, there's nothing that our by file policy, officer it's could do. Correct. No. So, this is just a conversation where it was suggested and corrections were made without needing to have a policy change. Neighborly requests are legit. But what we need to look at uh, does council want to review that policy? If I may, uh, we recently had a fantastic update about uh, the snow policy on, I think, our website and, and whatnot. I read through that. And uh, for the first time I noticed in our policy currently, our snow removal policy, it says, of course, you cannot shovel your driveway, driveway snow out onto the road. Uh, and we would prefer that your cars be moved. But if you do leave your car, and, and help me, this I guess is a question for administration, but maybe see if I'm interpreting this right. If you, if you don't move your car, the plow will go around it. And then the wording said, and the removal of that snow will be your responsibility. Now I'm guessing, we phrased it that way, just saying we as a town aren't going to be liable to go out there again later and move that snow. That's that's your problem now. Well, but but your what I wanted to clarify is it's not that the expectation is that they now need to shovel that whole, I mean, you know, okay. it can be fairly deep on the road all the way around their whole vehicle. And, uh, and so, I mean, because if that's the interpretation, we could ask that of this person. We could say, hey, it's your responsibility to move now all that snow off of there <laughs> and that whole big swoop. That's how I read it. So as soon as I saw this, I immediately thought of that. And I thought, you know, we do have a little bit of muscle in that bylaw to, for this kind of thing. But I mean, uh, her point of view of having bus, school bus going there in a very narrow area that is now restricted, and maybe I see, are we putting kids at risk? Unnecessarily putting them at risk. Well, that's a, that's a dangerous line to cross, because <laughs> there's well, a lot of places around town. <laughs> but it's crazy, but it's, it's something we need to think about, because security is our, right. it's our duty. Yeah. So, so two things I to say and then ask. One is, um, yes, that's how the bylaws are written. Since I've been here, it's been our practice that we've always tried to make sure we don't pin anybody in. I mean, if we got one that doesn't move all winter, it's probably going to get pinned in. <laughs> but we've also, sometimes when they plow, we'll get calls from somebody that says, hey, they left a big trail on my driveway or in front of my vehicle. Our guys will run over and, they run over and scoop it out of the way quick as best they can. So I suppose that the one reason why we don't necessarily just tell everybody, sorry for your luck, shovel it out, is we don't put notice on the streets to have your vehicles mm -hmm. gone. Because we never know exactly where we're gonna be, exactly when we're gonna be. Yeah. We tried it for a while and people were more upset that we asked them to remove their cars and didn't get there mm -hmm. than it was that if we just went around what was on the street. Right. With Mrs. Henderson, her street has, it's, it's a great example if you go up there and look, there's an acute issue on that street of off-street parking. You have a number of residents on that street who own six, seven, eight vehicles. So there's two in the driveway and the whole street's taken up with off street, which again, technically isn't illegal. They're registered and insured. But you also have a number of bus drivers on that street. So they park their buses in, across the street in front of the neighbors or down the street in front of the neighbors. And so as much as we have super wide streets in town, that street becomes Very narrow. quite narrow. Mm -hmm. And I asked Lloyd just to get a bit of a feel for this regionally, and he has a network of his other bylaw officers. It's not unusual to prohibit buses, for example, in residential areas, parking there, not driving there, but parking there. So that's not an unusual thing. If you look at a number of communities, you can't park a school bus yeah. in the residential area. Simple as that. They gotta be provided that's off for street. I suppose if it's off street, that so might be different. Yeah. school bus. Yeah, she okay. parks on her driveway. Yeah, they yeah. told her that she couldn't park on the street, but yeah. as long as she's off the street, she's right. okay. So we have a number of school buses all over the town that park there all the time. Um, most of the West Wind buses park on Main Street at the bus barn up there. They have a place to go. 
but all the blood tribe buses, they're owned or they're contracted and they are parked all over residentially through the town. And Mrs. Henderson Street is an acute example of off-street parking issues. We don't have them in most other places in town. It is really a, because of a couple of homes there that have a ton of vehicles that never move. It's an example of, of an interesting issue. And there, there are residents in there that drive buses and have horse trailers and have RVs and have a number of vehicles. So I, why I had it in correspondence, but I told the mayor I wouldn't mind if council wants to look at any part of that bylaw if we want to look at it in different can. I'm not suggesting it has to be. I mean, we've, we've dealt with it as it is for a long time, but you know, you can't, there are certain things like school buses that it is fairly common outside of carts and you can't park them in a residential area. Whether we want to look at that, I'll leave, I'll leave to you. Mayor, do we have any town-owned uh, lots Not, yeah, we do. that are just east of that area where we could designate that as an in-school, while the school, uh, school is in, 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 not during the summertime, seasonal work. Yeah, that the, the buses can well, park in that area. Well, you know, if you remember, we have a lot that is behind the Royal Bank. Yeah, but now these, these people live up on that East Hill. Well, that's why some, they're using that We spot. have some yeah. on the East Hill too. But, but is there is there is there is there an area up on that East Hill that we could designate as a school bus parking area? Do, do we then need to have to clear that area out because you get enough snow in those places and you're gonna have stuck some school buses there? Mm -hmm. That's why they like to park on the street and they don't have to worry about pulling it out. I, I'm not opposed to what you're saying. The problem is, is we've had a neighbor that drove bus every year. Exactly. So, so now do we have to find spots <coughs> all over town. in every quadrant of town for bus parking? That would be my concern, right? Where many municipalities say you can't park in there. You can't park in residential areas. So we did talk to the school division, and, and to, uh, Lloyd talked to the school division, I should say, and they said our bus drivers can drive their vehicles up to the storage yard, get their bus, run their route, take the bus back, drive their vehicle home. They didn't. They weren't object. They didn't object to uh, no buses in residential areas. Again, we hadn't had a thorough conversation with them. Just asking in theory if they had provision. Where what I see you doing is it's every blood tribe bus in Carson parks in front of the residents because they're either owned by that resident or contracted to be driven by that resident. Yeah. yeah. The blood tribe bus system used to have the bus barn out here, mm -hmm. and I don't know. I couldn't tell you the whole backstory, but at the end of the day, they don't anymore. Cool. So there's no buses there. So it's. It's tricky, but like I said, I I totally empathize with Mrs. Henderson. I Her street too. is an acute example of off-street parking issues, more than any other in town that I can think of by a long shot. But but there's a number of other streets that very easily become that. Like mm -hmm. The street in front of my house, when I had that truck in front of there, that road suddenly is not very wide. Cool that truck. Right. <laughs> Don't be messing around with me here. <laughs> it is true. It is true. That's why. Okay. All right. So here, help me a little bit. Do you feel that we should look at our policy and see if we can improve that policy regarding trailers and buses? Yes. Okay. I I, I think I think we should take a look at it if. If uh, we have to tweak that policy to get the buses off the street, I guess so be it. That would solve a lot of other problems with a lot of other vehicles. I think okay. it would anyway. There's trailers actually, and buses or oh, oh, whatever. Okay, so we we'll give that to administration to do. Will that be fair enough? Well, I, I almost think of this as, it, it feels like a kind of a one-off complaint that we can deal with the specific issue. Mm -hmm. that, uh, it's no, not we've, had two, we've had two other ones already that have come up. It's on not that same street, yeah. or on that same street. Uh, other areas of town, other areas of town. Is that are like trailers, RVs, buses? Yeah, no, that is quite yeah. a lot. Yeah, if wheels with their extensions out. Yeah. yeah. No, it's. Really it's, <laughs> it's you know, maybe let's play, let's yeah. have that revision, yeah. and I, I think it's worthwhile well having the discussion. Okay. There, there's a lot of issues to discuss there, but right. I just I personally, I'll just share my thoughts. I, I'm, I'm a little hesitant because we are, you know, a fairly rural town. And, you know, we're not Lethbridge or Calgary. And 
So, you know, and we do have wide, wide streets, so I don't want to We have some very narrow streets, right? But we have some narrow ones. Sure. If, you go, see, still, if you go see, if you go see that one, once you see the parking all along on the corner, there's a fairly sharp corner there, you're going to be surprised how narrow it is. Right. Okay, we'll leave it at that. So we are coming at the end of the regular meeting, and we need to go in camera. I can uh, move that we adjourn, or go and move into in camera. And this is for CAO review. All right, all in favor? Thank you.